In this video, we'll be going over image optimization and compression settings for Lens Studio. All right, so I'm here in Lens Studio and I'm using version 5.0.17. And here in my project, I've already added a screen image. And for that material on my screen image, I've already set it to this lake uh, texture that I downloaded from Pixabay, which is a great source for free images. Now, uh, if we select this image here in the asset browser, we can view the compression settings that help us optimize our image. But before we take a look at that, if we jump over to Pixabay, when I downloaded the image, I actually downloaded it in its max resolution, 5,568 by 3,712. And that is a file with a size of 6.6 .6 megabytes. But if we look at Lens Studio, we can see that that width is 2,048, the height is 1,365, and its original file size is 2.4 megabytes. So what happened here is Lens Studio doesn't support textures with the resolution greater than 2048 by 2048, um, aka 2K resolution. And so when we imported that image, it automatically downsized it, which itself is a form of optimization. Uh, we don't need that huge, huge image texture. And uh, if you do have a high quality texture, just keep in mind, we're using these in a Snapchat lens, not an IMAX film. You don't need these massive images to have a good quality experience in your lens. All right, so let's talk about these compression settings. So when you first add your image, um, you will probably be uh, given this performance compression at first. And then there are some different levels here. You can play with them. Uh, medium seems to work pretty well. I don't really ever change that. So what does the performance compression do? Performance compression optimizes the memory usage or RAM usage of uh, the image. So you can see we went from 2.4 megabytes to 1.34. Now, depending on your image, this can actually go up above the original. The image might end up at a bigger size, but the memory usage will be lower. Now in Lin Studio 4, it used to display the RAM usage right here below the size. So if you're on the later version of Lin Studio 5, uh, that might be added here. So if you're seeing something different, it's probably just a different version. Now, on the other hand, if we choose the size compression, you can see that we have a much smaller file size, only 373 kilobytes, uh, but our memory usage in the lens will be a little bit on the higher side. So you kind of want to balance what you're trying to optimize. Do you need to optimize the memory usage of your lens? Do you need to optimize the uh, storage size of your lens? Or maybe you'd have to kind of mix and match between the two to get a well-performing lens. Now these compression settings inside Lens Studio are great and they're very useful. It's just like a one-stop shop. You import your image and you can get some nice compression on it. However, sometimes I like to optimize my images outside of Lens Studio before loading them in. Um, mainly if I want to change the size of a bunch of images. To do that, I like to use a tool called Crushy and you can find it here at crushy.app. I didn't develop it. I don't know who did. I'm not endorsed. This is just a tool I like to use. It's available for Windows and Mac. Now inside Crushy, there are a bunch of different options that we can use to optimize an image. But let's start by dragging our mountain lake image over here. Uh, or you can also add a folder if you have like an image sequence you need to optimize. All right, so here is our lake image. It tells us the file format, the size, and it's ready to crush. So the first place I like to look at is this width and height. And I like to use max size. Um, I don't want to specify exact dimensions for each image. I'll just say a max size. So um, if this isn't gonna be in the foreground, maybe it's a background element, maybe just 512 pixels and other dimension is fine. Uh, and that'll be our max size. Uh, so this is pretty drastic for this image if I want to take over the full screen. I personally wouldn't go lower than 1280. Now next up, we can convert it. Um, JPEG or PNG are probably the most common options. They're both supported by Lens Studio. I usually always stick with JPEG unless I need an image with transparency. Maybe it's like a, a texture for a button where I don't want it to be a, a rectangle. Maybe it's a circle or a star or some other shape. In that case, keep it as PNG, but if it's got no transparency, usually JPEG. So I'm going to go ahead and select JPEG, um, which it's already a JPEG, so I could also leave it as do not convert. Now, next up, we have this quality slider. So we can have um, different quality levels. So zero, you can see we have this high subsampling, our JPEG quality is lower. We can go all the way up um, and that adjusts all these sliders really 
um, easily for us. We don't need to worry about them. Uh, so quality level one is a pretty good one. Uh, this JPEG quality of 85 is pretty good. The subsampling level two, that's fine. Um, we can see the comparison in just a second. So let's go ahead and click crush all. Now you can see that our file is 98% smaller. And that comes from these options, uh, mostly from our size though. That's where we can get a lot of savings. So we can click on it. You can see after and before. And in this case, since it's so drastic, we did lose a lot of quality. But this is for a smaller element or something in the background. That's pretty um, acceptable usually. So let's just go up to uh, 1280 by 1280 and we can recrush. You can see that we are 88% smaller, 316 kilobytes. And you can see that before our image is fairly sharp, after it gets a little fuzzier. But again, if this is in the background of a lens, this is a great space savings. We just saved a ton of space. So let's click off of that. Now if we save all, it'll overwrite the original image or we can save to a folder uh, to keep the originals intact. Uh, so we could save to your folder and then import into Lens Studio. And then we can let Lens Studio do its compression savings on top of that, maybe for performance, or we can just turn them off if we are happy with our file size and RAM usage. All right, so I'm back in Lens Studio. I brought in that compressed version of the image. Um, so you can see we have a pending task right here while we're canceling, well, I'm sorry, while we're compressing that image, we can cancel it if we want. Um, so we can go ahead and see what that looks like. Uh, so yeah, so here's a good example of when our performance compression increases our image size. So we went from 309 kilobytes to 535, um, which if we have um, RAM limitations, this is an okay um, trade-off to make. It's not a huge difference, but it can help get our lens pass review if RAM is an issue. Or we could compress the size even further. You can see our image gets even smaller. Uh, let's update this material so we can actually see the image. Uh, so you can see the color shifted a little bit from our compression and stuff, but as a background image, um, you can see it's a little fuzzy, but overall this is not bad, especially if the user or something else is going to be in front of it. So lastly, let's go ahead and just turn that off since we already had our other compression and we'll refresh. And this is what our background would end up looking like. It's not very different from using the higher uh, resolution 2K texture versus our 1280 resolution image. So please use the compression settings inside Lens Studio. If you have a bunch of images or you need to resize a bunch, I highly recommend uh, Crushy. It's a really handy tool and it saves me a ton of time getting images ready to use inside Lens Studio.